Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about how to shop for the Mediterranean diet. It's the number one question I get asked all the time when people want to start the Mediterranean diet. What should they pick up when they go to the supermarket? This is going to be a two-part video. In this first part, I want to talk about items that I buy on repeat. So I'm going to give you a list of 12 items that I buy weekly. These are items that will help you get your recommended amount of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, and more. And remember that each color of food offers you different nutrients. So let's get started. The first item is lemons. I buy lemons by the bag and I use them for everything. I use lemons all the time in salad dressings, in dips, sauces. I make lemon water, <laughs> which I drink all the time. I put slices around roasted vegetables and chicken and fish. And they make a great flavor substitute if you don't want to cook with wine. So it's a lot of times I'll throw a little white wine in a pasta dish or a sauce or a soup, but if you don't like that, you can just squeeze in a little lemon juice instead. And it's not going to make everything taste lemony, but it will give a nice bright flavor and it'll enhance the flavors around it. So buy lemons. Number two is avocados. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love my avocado toast because I post pictures of it there all the time. <laughs> avocados are a great source of healthy fat. And there is something about their texture that satisfies that craving for something fattening and creamy. They're great on sandwiches and salads. And who doesn't love guacamole? <laughs> the next item is bakery bread. Now, this isn't something I buy weekly. I probably buy bakery bread every other day. I'm not afraid of carbs and the Mediterranean diet is not a low carb diet. So I don't know how carbs got such a bad name in the United States, but everybody went on a low carb diet for a while. And it's not carbs that are the enemy. It's the highly processed carbs that are your enemy. So if you go to the supermarket to buy bread, if you look at the label, you're going to be shocked by how many ingredients you see on that label. And they're full of additives and processed ingredients and hidden sugars. So when you go to the bakery, it's the closest thing you can get to baking bread at home. Now, I don't really have time to bake bread at home all the time, and I'm sure you don't either. But if you go to the bakery, you're going to get a loaf that was baked that morning by a baker, and will have very few ingredients, and it's certainly not going to have all the additives. Now, it's not going to last as long, um, but it may not when you taste real bakery bread. <laughs> and you can also get whole grain breads at the bakery. I'm particularly fond of rye bread for sandwiches and for breakfast. Rye bread doesn't work in all situations, but it's one of the healthiest breads you can eat. Um, so don't be afraid to eat bread, just get a good quality bread at the bakery. The next item is tomatoes. Now in the summertime, I buy tomatoes by the bushel. <laughs> well, I don't know what an actual bushel is, but I buy tomatoes by the basket full and we use them in everything. And there's nothing better than just a simple tomato sandwich. One of my favorite things to do is to take the bakery bread that I talked about earlier and put a little Dijon mustard on it and a big fat slice of tomato. And it's a wonderful summer sandwich. Now tomatoes aren't really around in the winter. Um, but you can buy canned tomatoes that I use to make sauces. I'm always buying crushed tomatoes or whole tomatoes that are peeled, or I even buy diced tomatoes when I'm making salsa at home. So tomatoes are a great food for you on the Mediterranean diet. I mean, who doesn't love bruschetta, right? So in the summer, you can get fresh, wonderful tomatoes. You can roast or you can eat in salads or you can eat on sandwiches. And in the winter, you can buy the kind that come in a carton or in a can. The next item is leafy greens. I can't emphasize enough how important leafy greens are to a Mediterranean diet. Now there are all kinds of salad greens that you can get, but there are lots of lovely greens that you can cook as well. Some of my favorites are Swiss chard, dandelion greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, beet greens, collard greens. There are so many versatile greens out there. Now, if you're not a kale lover, and I know a lot of people don't like the taste or the texture of kale, I have an article and I will post it down below that I've written that are 10 greens that you can eat when you don't want to eat kale. <laughs> And kale isn't actually the healthiest green for you. A few years ago, there was a study conducted that was trying to look for the most healthiest food. It was looking for the superfood, and kale didn't even come in the top five. It was maybe six or seven on the list, but the number one was actually watercress. And watercress is a great thing that you can add to salads or soups, or you can make watercress sandwiches. So explore your leafy greens. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The next item on my list is coffee. So if you're a coffee lover like me, you probably drink two or three cups of it a day, right? <laughs> now that I'm a little bit older, I have switched to decaf and there are a lot of great decaf brands on the market now. So it used to be in the olden days that decaf just kind of tasted like brown water, but actually there are some brands out there that are really good. So there's a brand that I buy at Whole Foods now and I'm not sponsored by them, but it's called Allegro and you can get it at Whole Foods or you can also find it on Amazon um, through the Whole Foods uh, shopping site. 
and it's called Allegro and they have a decaf French and a decaf Italian that I absolutely love. And I'm telling you, I go through a bag of this a week. So seek out a brand of coffee that you really like. If you're a coffee lover, it really matters to you what your coffee tastes like. So when you're buying it, it doesn't always have to be the most expensive brand. It's whatever it happens to be your taste. Find one that you really love and use it as a pleasure that you can have on the Mediterranean diet. The next item is garlic. I use garlic in everything. <laughs> I cook with it, I use it raw, I put it in olive oil and use it as a dipping sauce for that Italian bread that I buy. I put it in sauces and soups and stews and just, I use it for everything. And garlic is one of those things that you can use raw, you can use cooked, and it's so good for you. So put garlic on your shopping list. My next item is cucumbers. When I was growing up, cucumbers were my favorite snack. <laughs> when I wanted something, my mother would cut a cucumber in half. She would give me half a cucumber, she would peel it, and she'd put a little salt on, and I was in heaven. That was my snack. I love cucumbers in salads. They're great in tzatziki sauce, which is a Greek sauce that's really delicious. I use them to make spa water. So sometimes I put lemon, sometimes I put cucumber, sometimes I put both in my water, and it's really delicious, and it helps you drink more water because it's a little more fun and a little more pleasant. But it's also great to take cucumber slices and use it instead of chips for dip. So I'll put a link up above here to my Mediterranean diet snack video where I show you a dip that I make with hummus and how I use some vegetables and things like cucumber slices as a dip, which is a nice low fat way to get your dip instead of using a salty, you know, greasy chip. My next item is canned tuna. Now, I am a tuna salad fanatic. <laughs> when I was in high school, four out of five days during the week, my mom packed me a tuna sandwich for lunch and I never got bored with it. So I eat tuna all the time. So I usually just put a little vegan -aise in it. I'm not vegan, but I'm not really a big fan of mayonnaise, but you can put just a little mayonnaise in it. You can use it without the mayonnaise. I always buy tuna in a can in olive oil. So there's usually albacore, which is kind of a white meat tuna or there's yellow fin which is the darker and a little fishier tasting so it's whatever is your flavor preference but you can use tuna in salads you can make spaghetti with it like you can make a little pasta dish where you put a little tuna and some olives a little olive oil and, and stir it up and it's a really nice flavor enhancer so try tuna it's a great way to get your omega-3 fatty acids the next item on my list is almond milk, and this is a more recent item for me. I was reading an article about cow's milk and how humans are the only species on the planet that drink another animal's milk, and the cow's milk isn't really all that great for us. Now, I don't know if I can go vegan and do com go completely dairy-free, because I love cheeses and things like that, but I don't really need to drink milk, and I don't actually like it that much. And I find that almond milk is a great substitute. So sometimes I'll go to Starbucks and I'll get a non-fat latte, but I also find that I really enjoy almond milk lattes. And I've noticed I buy unsweetened almond milk. It's a great ingredient to use just as a substitute for regular milk. We're so used to using cow's milk and everything. But if you're baking a cake, you can substitute almond milk. If I make mashed potatoes, I usually put it in a little milk. I've made it with almond milk and it has no difference. It's a good fluffy texture, just like I always get, and it's not sweet, because I don't buy the sweet and vanilla kind, I buy the regular. So why don't you give almond milk a try and try to wean yourself off of cow's milk. My next item is fresh herbs. Once you get used to cooking with fresh herbs, you're going to want to use them on everything. <laughs> So you can buy them in the store or you can even grow them at home. Even when it's winter time like it is right now, you can grow them in a pot in your kitchen. I love to have basil around and rosemary and maybe some mint. It's just so nice to be able to pluck it off the vine and just put it in your soup or in your spaghetti sauce or in eggs or on fish or chicken or anything. Toss them in a salad. Fresh healthy greens can provide lots of minerals and vitamins for your body and I think you'll really enjoy them. Last but not least on my shopping list is seasonal fruit. In the winter time, I don't always remember to eat fruit because it's so plentiful in the summer and I love strawberries and cherries and peaches and grapes and things like that. But in the winter time, we're sort of limited. So I like to buy bananas and I keep them on the kitchen table and that way I see them and I remember that they're there. And bananas aren't something that you can buy locally, they're grown tropically. So you can get them all year round. But at this time of year, also in the winter, there are things like apples and pears and they're just a nice substitute for sweets. So after dinner, if you're looking for a little sweetie, for dessert, why don't you try grabbing a piece of fruit instead of a cake or a cookie or something like that. You'll get plenty of nutrients, they're good for you, and this time of year especially, the citrus fruits are widely available, and you need those nutrients this time of year to help ward off colds and things like that. Planet Earth is a wonderful mother for us because it offers up the foods that we need seasonally at that time. 
So even though I happen to be shooting this video in the winter time, I'm saying seasonal fruit because at any time of year, buy what is in season. The earth offers us a bounty of what we need at that time in our lives. So in the winter time, when we're closed in and the air is still and we're not getting as much exercise and things and colds are going around, we need citrus fruits and that's what it provides at this time of year. And in the summertime, when you need other nutrients, it gives you other kinds of fruits to eat. So buy yourself some fruit the next time you go out because it's a staple of the Mediterranean diet. Well, thank you for joining me for part one of the list of things that I buy on repeat at least once a week. I hope this is helpful for you. Please check out part two of this video where I list pantry items that I don't need to buy quite as often, but there's still things that are important for the Mediterranean diet. So it's things like beans and pasta, things like that, but you don't necessarily go through them as quickly so you don't have to buy them every week. I hope to see you there. Thanks for joining me. Bye.